Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Knowledge Horde, an informative hamster care podcast. Today's episode is about cage sizes. Cage size is something that can be often overlooked or checked off quick when someone is beginning to own or has owned a hamster for a while. However, the cage is where your hamster has spent virtually all of its life in. So as hamster owners, we should do our best to make it an enriching place to be. Hamster cages are measured in square inches or square centimeters, or length times width. For comparison, houses are generally measured in square feet or square meters. In North America and Canada, a commonly quoted and tossed around bare minimum cage size is 450 square inches, or 2,093 square centimeters. They give you an idea that is around 12 inches by 37 inches, or 30 centimeters by 94 centimeters. Before that, 360 square inches, or 2,322 square centimeters, was commonly pushed around as a bare minimum. However, these minimums were not based off of scientific studies or hamsters' territories in the wild. They are easily accessible sizes. 360 square inches is also a 20-gallon long tank, and 450 square inches is the size of a 40-gallon breeder. As hamster care is improving, to let our hamsters thrive rather than just survive, cage size must expand as well. In nature, hamsters have miles of space to roam, burrow, and create territory. While this clearly isn't achievable for most, if not all, people, we can still provide large cages. Every hamster will have different needs for cage size. However, based on experiences, many hamster owners agree hamsters do best with, at minimum, 600 to 800 square inches, or 3,870 to 5,160 square centimeters. However, a minimum is not a magic happy number. In this case, it's considered to be the smallest space your hamster can begin to thrive in. Some Syrians may be okay in 600 square inches, while a dwarf may need 800. It also could be the other way around, or your hamster may need even more space, which is why it's necessary to start big and be prepared to upgrade. Female Syrians often need more space due to a mating drive, sometimes over a thousand square inches. When measuring a cage, make sure to always measure at the base for things like bins, which slope. The general kinesis is to get the largest cage possible and enrich it as well as you can. Enrichment is a huge factor in keeping hamsters happy and enriched. Deep batting is one of the biggest factors. In the wild, hamsters spend most of their time burrowing. We can still replicate this in captivity. As a goal, it's best to generally have a minimum of 6 inches or 15 centimeters of bedding. However, if possible, it's always good to aim for more, such as 8 or even 12 inches, 30 centimeters, if you can. Make sure to use a packed down bedding so your hamster can burrow well, versus a flopped up one which already has a lot of gaps. But your hamster is already going to make it packed down when they walk. So like, I mean, just pack it down, honestly. Some other ways to add enrichment to your cage are scatter feeding. Instead of using a bowl, scatter some or most of their food so they need to explore to find it. You can also scatter herb mixes and hide sprays, pieces of plants with oats or seeds like flax on them. You can also use a variety of textures like sand and coconut files that can go in digging containers, wood like cork and grapevine, platinum, moss, or aspen bedding. You should never use pine or cedar, even kin dried. This is a topic we'll expand on another day. Enriching food also. This is also a topic for another day. I hope you're going to be very excited for that. But a high variety seed mix is enriching and natural. A proper size upright wheel. All hamsters should have a wheel of at least 8 inches. Though some Syrians, Chinese dwarves, or very, very chunky winter white, Russian Campbells, or hybrid dwarves. So yeah, they may need larger, <laughs> they're just chunky boys. It's also important to know how to tell if your hamster is stressed. Symptoms of a stress or bored hamster are Number 1. Bar climbing or biting. This is not natural when hamsters do not use metal to shorten their teeth. It's a hamster attempting to escape. This is also known as monkey barring and can be displayed as a hamster climbing a mesh lid in a tank or bin cage. It's not limited to just tanks or bin cages. Obviously, they're definitely um, barred cages. Yeah. When done excessively, it can rub rod fur around their snout and damage their teeth. Some hamsters can also become addicted to it. So even in a properly sized cage, 
they'll always climb into. Number two, lethargy. This is like hamster depression. They may not move except for food and water and not care if you pick them up in ways they're uncomfortable with. Syrians especially are prone to this, which is why they're often considered cuddly. This is also why dwarf hamsters are often known as aggressive because they tend to exhibit the third behavior on our list, which is fun cage aggression. This is when a hamster becomes defensive of the little space they have because it's not enough, so they charge at the human or bite them in the cage to get them out of their territory. Generally, hamsters stop showing this when taking out of the cage. Dwarves tend to show cage aggression more than lethargy, though this is not always true. Okay, so moving on to excessive wheel running. While a wheel is a good toy to have and hamsters do use it when bored, Sometimes a hamster becomes so bored in their space that they spend almost all of their waking hours running on the wheel. This is simply because they have nothing else to do with their time, so they eat, drink, run, sleep. They have no other enriching things to do. Number five. All right, so chewing out of the cage. If a hamster wants to escape, they may chew out of a wooden or plastic cage slash spin. If your hamster displays any of these symptoms, you may need to change up your enrichment or consider a cage upgrade, depending on your specific scenario. Just because you have a large cage doesn't mean happiness. You need to use that space. Don't leave it empty. Fill it up so they have things to do in their time. In conclusion, cages are where your hamsters live their whole life with you. It's an owner's responsibility to make it an enriching, engaging place to be so your hamster can feel safe and happy. That's it for our first ever episode of the Knowledge Horde. If you have any questions, feel free to email us or join the forum that collaborated to make this podcast, Hamster Hideout Forum. You can find a link in the description of this video. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful day. This is Lilam signing off. <laughs>